That's the coolest thing yeah. I've ever seen. <laughs> I can't believe how fast it went. Yeah, they weld pretty good. All right, everybody. Here's the video that everybody's been bugging me about and waiting for. This is the video on how to convert your alternator to an arc welder. Um, before we get really deep into this video, I want to show you basically the internal workings of an alternator. If you are confident you know how it works, you can skip this right to where we start building the welder. But I wanted everybody to have an idea of how the alternator works so that you know what you're actually converting and how the alternator will actually make 120 volts DC and how it will weld. So I got Jimmy here. Jimmy, uh, he understands kind of how alternator works, but you'll see the light go on as he learns what I'm, what I'm basically talking about here. And that's going to be my gauge to know when you guys as viewers have got what I need you to know. So we're going to start by just showing a couple different alternators. This alternator is for an LS. This is one that I've been working on to convert for uh, my LS on my Jeep. This alternator was off of Mike Kemp's Jeep. Now this is about a 100 amp alternator. It's standard on all Jeeps. It has two field circuits and I'll explain those in a minute. That also is the same as any Dodge Cummins diesel uh, pre-2000 and those make really good welders. This is a standard 67 amp GM uh, internally regulated. This is the smallest alternator I would advise anybody using. However, you can use any size you want. You're just going to stress the alternator out. A um, couple of things you're going to want to get. Um, this is a quick disconnect plug. Um, those are pretty clean. In the end, you can convert a set of jumper cables. And then by the end of this video, I'll show you how to do that. But uh, that these plugs come in different colors. I think I have yellow here. I don't have a black one. But uh, I will put the part numbers on there. And depending on what alternator you use, you're going to need a double throw six pole switch or a double throw three pole switch. Also, it's required that you get a constant duty 12 volt relay or disconnect. This is, you know, a golf cart solenoid. Um, these work about the best because I've never had one fail. Um, and it only takes one. I've just got enough stuff here for two welders. So basically um, the internals on an alternator. There's like three major pieces unless it has a regulator in it and then there's four. So the first thing we'll talk about, this is the regulator. This is the brush, the brush contact, the bolts on top of the regulator. This right here is a diode. It's a series of diodes set up as a rectifier. Now I'm going to play a little short clip video to show you how a rectifier works. What you are looking at here is basically a rectifier. So what is a rectifier? What does it do? Well if I slow down time here just a little bit, a rectifier will turn an AC power source as you can see here with a back and forth motion of electrons into a DC power source where if you look here the electrons are moving forward in one direction only through the LEDs in only one direction and that is due to the magical wonders of diodes this is one of the most useful ways of using diodes in any circuit and you'll find them in pretty much every single circuit you look at. Okay, so now the purpose of the rectifier is this coil. This coil right here has three windings in it. Okay, so these three windings are actually in series over the top of each other. And what these actually do is they create an AC current on each one of these legs. Each one of these legs is then inputted into the rectifier and the rectifier converts the AC voltage to DC. Now, the depending on what you're regulating at is what that voltage actually reads. It can read anywhere from 0.1 volt 
to 150 volts depending on the RPM of the alternator and how much field control is being put in. So basically this is three AC generators that are laced over the top of each other. Now what makes these AC generators work is the next piece which a lot of people would call this the armature but armatures are in motors. This is actually a rotor and it contains the field windings. The field windings are just wrapped around this. They're not braided like a motor would be because a motor would need to make power. This needs to make mag magnetic energy and it does that through the brushes which control the field voltage going into the alternator. So you can see I've marked this. Each one of these is an opposing magnet. It's north and south, north and south, all the way around both sides. What that does when it rotates in here is it actually creates north-south magnets that create that AC voltage on the outer coil. That, that, is, that rotor is controlled by separate voltage apart from this voltage. The voltage coming off of this goes through the rectifier and comes out your positive lead on the back of your alternator. So that right there is your basic components. Now the important thing is the way an alternator regulates. The way an alternator regulates is the voltage controlled on the field circuits. Now on a General Motors alternator like the one we're working on, one of these field circuits just goes to ground. So you can just imagine that going to ground. Now as you apply voltage to this field circuit, this electromagnet will get stronger the more voltage you put on it. So what the regulator is doing is controlling how strong these magnets are. And that's controlling the yield output of your alternator. So to convert an alternator to a welder, all you have to do is bypass the regulator and hook the field to 12 volts positive. The faster you spin it, the higher the voltage. I've seen them put out 200 plus volts with the big Lease Nevilles and these little GM 67 amp like this, they will put out 120 volts and they weld phenomenal. The problem with bypassing the field is now you need to disconnect from the battery and that's where this comes in. So this will actually be in your wiring diagram to disconnect from your battery. Now this alternator voltage is dead ending because it's not going through to your battery. That terminal becomes 120 volts or it becomes your welding lead. So now I'm going to show Jimmy the diagram and let him study it for a second and see if he's got it figured out. So this would have been your battery, right? So that battery lead normally would have hooked to here. To the alternator, right. Correct. Okay. So now, with this relay, this, uh -oh. so key on, yep. this relay is hooked up for your 12 volt charge, correct? Right, correct. So now we have this regulator, which is the regulator. Right. Um, when this switch is flipped, what happens to the field is it becomes disconnected Okay. okay, from the regulator. Oh, okay. Now the field is what? It's hot. It's hot all the time. Volts, 12 right. volt. Okay. So this becomes disconnected. Right. This becomes fed 12 Full volt. Hot, right. Now your welding lead. And then this is teed off into the welding lead. And yes, and the outer case of the alternator is your negative welding lead. And then oh, you really? Just, yeah, and then you just tap into those two and that becomes your 100 and... 20 volt output. So obviously the engine RPM is what regulates that voltage. The voltage right. On a diesel truck they'll almost weld it idle. Wow. Like a Cummins diesel truck. Right. But uh, on like your Jeep, like say you were going to put it on your Cummins Jeep with right. that little Chevy alternator, you'd probably have to hold it at about 1500 RPM to weld with it. Okay. And probably about 2000 RPM to get the 120 volts okay. out of the small alternator. So, I'm 
understanding how the rectifier works. Okay. When you put AC voltage in, it goes through a diode. Right. That diode prevents any voltage from coming back. Correct. So essentially what happens when you have four diodes in a link together, the voltage continues forward, which makes it direct current, not AC current. But it's still phased. Um, so basically this is three phase. Right. But by hooking diodes up, you're actually you're actually canceling anything okay. from coming back. Right. So, so one coil puts voltage in. Right. As soon as that one goes to pull back, the next one's already putting voltage in. Okay. Then, okay. then the next one's putting voltage in, and they just cycle with each other, right? right. At 60 hertz. Okay. So, when you when you um, have that steady flow of voltage like that, it becomes DC. Right. Now, to regulate it at 12 volts, all you have to do is reduce your magnetic field That's energy. Crazy. Okay. So, that right there is the key to regulation. Okay. Now, the key to making our alternator a welder is being able to turn them magnets up as hot as possible. Right. Okay. Now, I've always thought about playing with this one day and actually using some of the voltage from the other side of the alternator okay. to run the field. I don't know how much they'll take, but at 24 volts, right. this would weld at idle. Wow. Okay. But I, I think it is better for it to spin faster, so we'll just stick with what we know works. Okay. But one day I'm going to experiment with that. <laughs> and I actually regulate my voltage going into this so that I can control my temperature uh, with a voltage regulator instead of throttle. But uh, that's the long and short of how the alternator works. And now I'm going to put a, a diagram up on the, on the screen here. Um, you guys need to print this diagram because it is the key to wiring your alternator. So, Jimmy, do you think you can turn an alternator into a welder? Yeah, it's pretty simple you, when you break it down that way. You understand it well enough. So this right here is your your GM brush contact. If right. you if you look at the way that is, um, you got a brush over here that wraps around, makes contact with one of these terminals. The other one goes underneath. So all you would have to do is ground one and hook a, a wire loop to the other and actually run that outside um, the alternator and use an external regulator, which this is just a standard Ford um, regulator. You can buy these at the auto parts store with the pigtail. Um, I have the part numbers here. Um, I think you all can read that. And uh, this is the pigtail. So basically you need to get control of these brushes any alternator, any size, um, obviously above 67 amps works the best, but I think a Suzuki 50 amp alternator would weld as far as that goes. Once you have control of these two brushes, that's your field circuit, and then you're going to need to be able to tie into that with a fairly heavy cable, and then obviously um, I'm going to show you how to convert jumper cables because they work the best because you can still use those you can still use that connection for your jumper cables and um, just plug directly into your welding plug. So we'll get started on installing this and then I'm going to get Jimmy to weld with it and he'll give you his opinion on how well it works. Okay, we're back on the uh, welder again. This is that alternator that you saw on my bench earlier. It has the two lead wires coming off. This is my switch up here. It's, uh, six pole double throw and this is the welder plug this right here is the jumper cable I was telling you about so what you do is just take your positive lead get rid of your positive clamp and put one of these little uh, pegs on the part numbers in the bio and the part number will be on the screen and then you use the negative side and you just come off of a good ground at your alternator your alternator body is the ground so if you 
you want a really good lug you can bolt on to something here and put a lug over here to clamp to. LS obviously was made for this. Desiree's here to help some filming. Jimmy's here to test the thing out. So let's get this thing fired up. Right now it's in charge. So let me get a little piece of metal. So I've got one of these things. I keep my welding rod in and uh, I keep a pretty good little variety of welding rod. These little red ones seem to burn really good on these things, but that's, uh, that's something you'll want to put together for your off-road program. And uh, I also, rather than carry a helmet, like a full helmet or an expensive helmet, I carry these little goggles because they'll, uh, they'll actually fit over my glasses because I'm blind now. And uh, they just use a little flip up screen. So you can use two pair of sunglasses, you can use whatever you want. Obviously people are worried about face protection. So whatever, whatever suits you. I don't like to carry a lot of stuff on the trail. So essentially, uh, Two pair of sunglasses will do it if that's all I've got. Uh, try that rod, Jimmy. Huh? That's all the magic is on. So when I flip it over to weld, you'll actually hear the motor change. Now it's not charging. Now we're actually on the welder. So Jimmy's just going to clamp into the uh, the positive side of that. I'm going to run his. Uh, temperature by raising the throttle. I didn't put the throttle control on here yet, but you can get an infinite throttle control to control it or whatever it, uh, whatever you need. All right, so we'll give it a little throttle here. Okay, we're back, but we're not like back how you think we are. This is what we got going on. The other alternator had a burnt diode in it, so I didn't have time to build another one. I had this one. These are Nip and Denso. These are uh, two wire field. Obviously, I have the one field wire grounded, and then the other one is going to come right over here, and I'm just going to hook it to the battery. The good thing is, is you'll get to see how this works just stand alone. This, this cable is the only one attached. There's nothing else attached to the power lead. And then I have the ground on the body here. We may get a little bit of belt slip because the belt's kind of jury rigged. But uh, we're going to give it a try. Are you ready, Jimmy? We'll see. Are you ready to weld with a golf cart? Sure. Three cylinder diesel? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, bring it. Bring it. Oh. He says send it. Clear prop. I have to kind of hold the, uh, the belt so because okay. I didn't make the tensioner fit. Right on. But you could worry a thing to death.
looks like I know how to weld. Dude, did you just see that? Look at that. Dude, with an alternator. That's that's okay. Fast. So I want to demonstrate one more thing. Yeah, hang on. Um, so. matter which way you go, it's DC. Really? So you can only do this with brush type motors. This is a this is cheapo grinder. And uh, same thing, give a little RPM. So that right there is your alternator welder. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> welding with an alternator or welding with a golf cart? <laughs> <laughs> Those welds are gorgeous. I can't believe how fast it went. Yeah, they weld pretty good. So, basically, um, you should externally regulate your alternator. That's the easiest way. Um, on the uh, little description, the diagram, it actually talks about a mid-80s Ford alternator. Those will fit most Chevys and all Fords, obviously. That is the best alternator you can use. The 120 amp, or I really like the Nippon Densos that come off from the Dodge Diesels. Now, this one is off from a Jeep, and it's basically a 70 amp alternator. So. All of those actually work really good. I hope this uh, helps you guys turn your alternator into a welder. Thanks for watching.